What's the good word, y'all? DKB here. So what's changed the last five years for the New York Jets offensive line? You know, if you think about that question for a few moments, you'd have to be impressed. Uh, we're talking about currently debating, you know, what we want to do at a backup tackle position where in just the last five years, we've had question marks at literally every position. We're talking tackle, uh, where at one point we've had to rely on uh, an aging Kelvin Beecham, um, a Brandon Shell. Connor McDermott to an extent at the guard positions, Alex Lewis, Brian Winters, uh, even at center, we were thinking about rolling with Jonathan Harrison for the future at one point. Um, so we've had a lot of struggles across the board and Joe Douglas has completely flipped this around again. Our biggest debate is figuring out who's going to be our primary backup swing tackle and we have a promising rookie uh, waiting in the wings there. So uh, something I want to keep in mind was uh, PFF had put out a report that basically had every NFL team broken out into tiers. And uh, the New York Jets was listed at number 13. And we were in uh, essentially the third tier, which was a high potential group. And uh, I think that might be the perfect, uh, you know, kind of caption for what this New York Jets offensive line looks like. Um, and, you know, if we go back and we really think about what's been going on with uh, some of the developments that Joe Douglas has made. Uh, we're talking about a high caliber type group. Uh, our lowest performer, at least on this PFF scale, was Elijah Vera Tucker. And a lot of us, I would say, just, you know, the eye test, uh, feel very confident in his ability to continue to progress. Um, so some key stats to throw out there, right? So our average snap count for our offense was 934.8 snaps um essentially not a full season so this is one of the things that stuck out to me because the health of the group has to be uh the key focus obviously there's going to be some backups that are getting some snaps and stuff but we're not talking uh an extremely high percentage i have to go back and essentially take makai back in his rookie year which we know he missed a lot of time for uh lake and tomlinson essentially led the way with uh uh, I believe it was Elijah Vera Tucker coming in right after him and George Fant not too far behind. And essentially everybody uh, on this team has missed time at some given point. So being able to consistently have that chemistry on the offensive line is going to be something that will help us take that to the next level without necessarily having to really do anything um, other than, you know, fingers crossed that we, we keep our offensive line intact. The other number was our average PFF grade. And so we average a score of 72.82. Again, I have to go back to Makai Becton's rookie year, but when you take a look at PFF's grading scale, uh, they have anywhere from 100 to 90 as an elite player, uh, 89 to 85 as a pro bowler, 84 to 70 is a starter, uh, and then 69 to 60 is a backup, and anything below that is a replaceable player. And Every one of our players, minus Elijah Vera, Tucker, essentially performed at a starter level or higher. Um, PFF wasn't very nice to Elijah Vera Tucker, but we know there are some kinks in this game he needed to work out. But again, from the eyeball test and what that offense uh, ultimately became during that rookie year with the plethora of injuries we had all across the board, um, you can't ask for too, too much. Now, the question will really be, does Makai Becton obviously stay healthy? Can we get him to perform? Does George Fant take any steps back in what was an excellent season for him, regardless of if he ends up playing right tackle or left tackle? Um, and then, of course, I would say Lakin Tomlinson is probably the safest player on the team. Uh, and then as far as the center, can Connor McGovern continue to show this, uh, you know, excellence in his zone blocking scheme, which seems to have gotten him back to the reason why we initially uh, sought him out in free agency. Now, of course, there's probably going to be upgrades and stuff um, that people are going to want to look to. I, I know one of the main call outs is we've been eyeing Ryan Jensen uh, for quite a few off seasons and things just haven't panned out our way. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I think high potential, like I mentioned before, obviously encapsulates uh, exactly what this offensive line can do. Um, I would say 13 probably is not a generous spot. I think that's a realistic expectation. If we crack the top 10, I would say that we've exceeded uh, what we can do a little bit or things just happen to jail, right? We finally got the offense on track and rolling, especially considering we've optimized things to 
be run the way LaFleur has uh, envisioned it. We have the tight ends that have the receiving and blocking ability that he covets. We now have our running backs um, set up in an excellent rotation that should allow a consistent lethal threat for him uh, with that home run threat ability Brees Hall has as well as Michael Carter's consistency and elusiveness. Um, we also have the receiving option. Brees Hall actually is a pretty underrated receiving threat himself. Michael Carter should definitely show some improvements there. And then we have the vet, uh, veteran Coleman, uh, Tevin Coleman, excuse me. But uh, it's going to be a fun time. I think this is the first time we should really be excited for our offensive line since we've had Brick and uh, Nick Mangold holding down the fort and, you know, watching the days of Fanica and Damian Woody and all those kind of guys. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Uh, do you think 13 is a... Uh, pretty solid position for us or do you guys think we're overshooting things or not you know selling ourselves high enough catch you guys again peace